I'm Dr. Coleman Martin, a neurointerventional specialist at the St. Luke's Brain and Stroke Institute in Kansas City, Missouri. This is Interventional Stroke Rounds. Today we have a man in his early 70s who recently had a minor stroke in the back part of his brain called the cerebellum. This temporarily affected his balance and coordination. The cause of his stroke was investigated with an MRA scan. He was found to have a blockage of his vertebral artery. He was treated with medication, but unfortunately, stroke symptoms returned. Urgently, I performed an angiogram, entering his arterial system at the right groin. A catheter was advanced up the aorta to the left subclavian artery, and then into the left vertebral artery. From here, we can take pictures of the blockage. Here we see three-dimensional pictures of our patient's head. As we rotate the picture to see the back of the head, we begin to see the blockage of the left vertebral artery. I'll render the bones translucent so we can see more clearly. This blockage is quite severe. While most of us have two vertebral arteries supplying the brain stem, he has only one vertebral artery. A blockage at this location can lead to a severe, even fatal stroke. Through the catheter, I'm injecting contrast, and under x-ray, we're seeing the blood flowing in the left vertebral artery. Repeating the injection, we can see the blockage marked by the red arrow. I placed a wire across the blockage. Now, over the wire, I'm advancing a tiny balloon up to the blockage. To see the balloon, it has two tiny black markers that show up under x-ray. They allow me to place the balloon in the center of the blockage. This is a gateway angioplasty balloon designed to relieve blockages of brain arteries. I'll inflate it with some blue dye so you can see how it works. Back to our patient, I'm double checking the position of the balloon. Notice how slowly the blood is flowing. The tiny balloon is nearly enough to occlude the blockage. I gently inflate the balloon to stretch the artery. Taking another picture, the blockage is better but not good enough to place a stent. Using a larger balloon, I am stretching the artery a bit more. Taking another picture, the balloon has nearly stretched the artery back to normal size. Now we are ready to deliver a wingspan stent across the blockage. This will prevent the artery from collapsing back to its previous state. I am releasing the wingspan stent across the blockage. Under x-ray, we can see tiny black dots opening as the stent is released across the blockage. One end of the stent is open. In just a moment, there, the other end is open. Let us look at a wingspan stent outside the body. Here, I will open one in my hand. Do you see how it unfolds and would conform to the inside of an artery? It is made of an alloy called nitinol. It is strong enough to hold an artery open, yet still flexible enough to pass through the curvy blood vessels leading to the brain. Magnified under x-ray, we again see the stent opening inside the artery. Time to take another picture. The flow is much better, but the artery still isn't quite perfect. I will bring up a slightly larger balloon and center it on the residual blockage. I inflate the balloon, stretching the artery to its full size. Looks good. That artery is flowing normally once again. At St. Luke's Hospital, we have a wealth of experience using stents in the brain. While stents cannot prevent every stroke, when one is needed, day or night, we are ready. I hope you found interventional stroke rounds interesting. At St. Luke's Hospital, we care about stroke and interventional education. Feel free to share this video on your blog, Facebook, and Twitter. Another stroke, gotta go.